it's time we tackle a quite popular thing one might want to animate, which is a running cycle. To keep things simple, we will draw the character from a side view, which eliminates a lot of perspective challenges and makes it a bit more approachable for anyone wanting to try this out. It goes without saying that 2D animation heavily relies on drawing skills. So the more knowledge and practice one has in that, things obviously become easier. But I want to try to pack this so that most people can follow along in their own time. I have Photoshop opened here, and this will be my animation software. But you can follow along in any software you prefer working in. I have a full tutorial on how to animate in Photoshop here on YouTube. So if this is your first time trying it out, you can have a look at that first and then come back to this. But for this scenario, it will not be very technical, so maybe you can just tag along. I will begin by making a new canvas that we can draw on and set the dimensions to 4K, 3840 times 2160 pixels, which is the standard 4K resolution. You can work at a smaller scale if you feel it gets laggy or if you don't think 4K is necessary. I just tend to make all my work at high resolution. Under Window Timeline, we can bring up the timeline and set it to be a video timeline. Make sure it is a video timeline here in Photoshop and not a frame timeline, as it's just a better experience to animate in a video timeline. You can zoom in and out here. Make sure you enable the timeline shortcut keys over here. So you can use your keyboard to move between the frames with the arrow keys. Then we will also go to timeline frame rate and set it to 24 frames per second. I will go to layer, video layers and create a new blank video layer. This is pretty much all the setup we have to do. Now you can scrub the time indicator up and down the timeline and use your arrow keys to move between the frames. Let's start focusing on the running cycle. We have a few distinct poses as we run. Some extremes where the legs are the furthest away from each other, a pose when the leg paths each other, and you will have two states of either of these since we have two legs. I will aim for a run cycle that is around 12 frames long. 12 is a pretty good number as it allows us to divide it easily six frames for each side of the body and we can also divide it further into four times three frames so it's quite handy for this kind of animation as it's a looping cycle we can trim the layers so we don't have too much excess make it a bit easier to see what we're dealing with as this will loop it doesn't really matter which frame you begin drawing but i kind of like to start on an extreme so let's do that this first drawing pass will only explore motion and leave out any details. You obviously want to keep the design of your character in mind um, so that the proportions are correct, but I don't think of any details here. Just the overall shape and where the limbs will go. So this can be incredibly roughly drawn if you prefer. It is just to explore the motion. Actually, the less you are attached to your drawings here, the better. It's good if you can do quick adjustments. This is my first pose. As my character is running, I've decided to lean the torso forward, as it adds a determined energy to the character, sort of dashing. So there are no real rules around how this should be done. You can definitely have a torso go the other way too, and add a kind of comedic run to it, as if the body can't really catch up with the fast running legs. The thing to keep in mind is where is the character's center of gravity and how can we pose the character to deal with that. The wrongs one can do is to ignore this completely 
and end up with an animation that doesn't seem to have any weight and just floats. But you can really push it far, but to break the rules you also have to understand them. So that's why this first pass is a nice time to play around and try things out. Break it and then fix it. I'm leaning my character forward. Let's talk about arcs. To plan our run cycle well, I will draw out a few guiding lines that can help visualize the path my drawings will follow. Let's take a look at this final example and analyze what's going on. The feet of the running person often follow a path that looks somewhat like this. You can distort this quite a lot to get different results, but it's a good guideline to begin with. We can swing the arms back and forth following a half circle like this. We get different results depending on how we space out the limbs along these arcs. As the arms follow a half circle going back and forth, they slow down for a moment when reaching their most extreme position as they change direction. So we will end up with more frames here. That leaves the frames down the middle more spaced apart, which results in a higher speed here. You don't have to precisely space them out. A lot of this is about feeling your way through it. It's a bit like music. Quantizing everything to a perfect beat is not always the most desired thing. This is what you would call easing though, where an element slows down before it reaches a stop or changes direction. In this scenario the legs and arms all complete the loop over 12 frames of animation. But the hips, the torso and the head's positions have a higher frequency and moves up and down twice within that sequence. Drawing the first extreme pose helps to map it all out as I know the distance between the legs and the arms. From this model I can draw those paths that I want my limbs to follow. Let's just do little scribbles along these paths to find a nice motion. We can begin with just mapping out the position of one foot here. As we barely have any perspective in this side view, the second foot will follow a very similar, if not exact, path as the first one, just offsetted with six frames. So when this first one is finished, I can just duplicate it for the second. We're not locked to this path at all. This is just my first rough animation pass, and we can continue to adjust as we draw the frames for the full character. Depending on the animation, I don't always draw these arcs out like this, but instead I just have them in mind when animating. But for this demonstration I think it's good to visually show them. I pay attention to how the foot would move and be positioned along this path. It drags flat along the floor and then flicks backwards as it leaves the ground. Then points the sole towards the sky for a moment before starting the journey back to the front again. We can play with how we distort the foot to emphasize certain motions. Right before it hits the ground I bend it upwards to make it feel like it really slaps down on the ground. Here we have a rough animation of our first foot. On its own it looks a bit funny, but let's duplicate it, split it in the middle and slide this one over to the beginning and the other to the end to create a six frame offset. And now we suddenly have something that represents feet running. This is going to make it a lot easier to draw the legs as we just need to connect the feet to the hips and make the legs do their thing. I will do the same for the hands here, but the rest of the character I'll animate more on feel rather than meticulously plan it out like this. The danger of following an arc too strictly is that you might end up with frames that feature less pleasing poses, sort of awkward ones that don't really read well. It's not easy to create a set of frames that describes the motion the best and still looks great for each frame, but that is the ultimate goal if possible. Now we have the hands swinging and the feet running. The rest of the body will sort of do its own thing, so let's tackle that individually. Back to the final example. You can see that as we run, the body might turn from one side 
to the other as the arms swing back and forth. So in the first six frame, we see the upper body angled more towards us. And in the following six frames, it's facing slightly the other way. However, you can see that frame zero and frame six are almost identical in their silhouette, just drawn differently to make the character face different directions. The same goes for frame three and nine, frame two and eight, one and seven and so on. So we can begin by just focusing on the first six frames and establish the poses, then use that as reference when drawing the remaining six, as they will just be repetition of the first facing the other direction. You can vary them, of course, to add a bit of individuality to them, but in general they can be very similar. For this running cycle, the hip and torso is at their lowest point as the legs pass each other, and at its highest in the extreme pose on frame 0 and 6. For a walking cycle, both feet would never leave the ground at the same time. But as we're running with a lot of speed, we can allow the character to be airborne for a few of the frames. The head is a third component that we can play with and offset from the body's rhythm if we want to delay it slightly. You can add a lot of character to the animation by playing with individual timings for different body parts. Let's roughly animate this. First, let's copy frame 0 to frame 6 and adjust it so the legs and hands are in the opposite direction. I will then work on frame 3, which is obviously right between frame 0 and 6. Here the body is facing a bit more forward and sits a bit further down. I flick back and forth between the frames to get a sense of the motion. And then with onion skin enabled, which lets me see a faint reference of what the upcoming and previous frames looks like, I map out the movement of the head for all the frames. Now that each of these six frames have something drawn on them, it's easier to start to see where things should go. For the rest of the animation, I don't use onion skin really, but just move back and forth constantly on the timeline. As we're designing motion here, working on the drawings in a quick and rough way while you simultaneously move between the frames often results in the best outcome. I work my way out of the scribbled chaos and adjust individual elements as I go. I don't try to finish a single frame in one go, but rather work on an arm for a few frames here and there, and then maybe a leg for a few frames, and let the entire sequence inform my placement of things, as I bring it closer and closer to completion in one big push. You can simplify this further and just animate a stick figure first, if you feel drawing the body like this is too challenging. Even with very simple stick figures, you can convey really nice looking motion.
I'm happy with this motion. We can now duplicate the animation, slide it over to the remaining six frames. I'll trim the first frame of this one, as that's the same as frame six, just with the limbs in the other direction. And now I would probably drop the opacity of these frames, create a new video layer above them and start tidying it up, defining which way the body is facing and which leg and arm is in front and so on. But in terms of animation, we've defined the main motion. You can really do several passes of animation on top of this to really tie it down before doing the final clean drawings. Once it's been worked on a bit more, you can also apply secondary motion to clothes and hair, for example. Drawing all the clean frames is the most time-consuming part, but it's less animation-focused and more design-focused. We can look at my already created animation for how some details have been applied. You can obviously play around and add your own character design to something like this. I hope you've learned something from this demonstration. You can check out my Patreon page for even more videos about animation. And of course, also subscribe here on YouTube. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.